All right. Um, so thank you for the introduction. What we looked at is how to best um, automate password change using password managers. Um, and just to give you a brief overview of what is to come, um, I first um, will tell you why this is an interesting and also important topic. Then um, I will show you the concept for automatic password change that we came up with. And we implemented this as a prototype, as a Firefox add-on, um, and we actually did a study. And I will talk about um, these two things, and then I will outline how we um, want to continue this work. So to give you a little bit uh, of an uh, introduction to this thing while we looked at it, um, the project I'm currently working in is actually part of an initiative in Germany that tries to bring practically relevant security to organizations. And the project I'm working in, that is the KMU Aware, um, has the goal to develop IT security awareness and education materials to relevant topics. And one of these topics is managing passwords. And if you look at the problems that people actually have when managing their passwords is that they have so many. They ha they're completely overloaded. Um, the primary problem with text passwords is that there's interference between all the passwords we have. And one of the solutions that is frequently recommended to people is using a password manager. And at this point, we, can ba it, we basically direct, directly come to the topic of password change. Because when you first adopt a password manager, among the first things you should do is get rid of all your bad legacy self-created passwords that were created so you could remember them easily. Because now you can rely on the password manager to remember all these passwords for you. However, unfortunately, um, the difficulty of changing these passwords is one of the main reasons, um, or has been identified, one of the main reasons hindering adoption of Password Manager, because it's actually quite a hassle. Um, and so we started this work uh, with two goals in mind. The first one being um, that we wanted to enable fully automatic password change using password managers. And on top of that, we wanted people to be able to use this technology to actually respond to breaches in a timely manner. Because you might have heard um, when Heartbleed hit, even months later, there were still, um, it was still in the news that more than half of the people that were actually affected never changed their passwords. And now we're not the first ones to think about this. Um, actually, some popular password managers, um, such as uh, LastPass or Dashlane, actually support automatic change but they only support um, a very small number of sites, um, actually, because, um, well, LastPass has 79, Dashlane has 315, um, and it's basically the most uh, popular US websites. And so immediately the question arises, what about all the other websites um, all around the world? And our solution, um, or our proposed solution to this problem is crowdsourcing. And here the general idea is that um, the users are able to teach the password manager how to actually change a password on a certain website. And then they can change this information with other users so, so these can benefit um, from this information and use this to change uh, passwords with their password manager automatically as well. And on top of that, we believe that also the incident reporting um, can be crowdsourced, um, so users, um, service providers, security experts can contribute to that, and there can actually be uh, notifications sent out um, to the people. And so how does this, um, this now very abstract, how does this um, look in a more concrete way? So I'm going to um, introduce this one part at a time. And the password manager here um, is the core um, that we're building on. It's, this is only the relevant component, so this um, could be a lot more complicated. But what we basically need um, is a place to store passwords, um, to generate passwords, and the password manager should be able to also handle um, user-generated passwords. And on top of that, we build a password changer module. And 
we have uh, these three components um, here that are, um, for the, that are responsible for the password change. And the first one here is the recorder. That is actually the component that the user can use to um, create what we call a blueprint for this password change. So he, this, when he changes the password on a website, he can start a recording, and this will simply produce a transcript of the action um, that are performed, like what, what forms are filled um, on the website, what buttons are clicked, and which pages are navigated to. Um, then the recording can be stopped. Um, the blueprint is um, stored in the blueprint manager, and later on the um, user can actually um, use this player component to play back the blueprint and um, to change the password automatically. Now, one of the issues here is that to fully automate this, you actually need to generate a password that complies to the password composition policy, no matter how arbitrary it may, may be on whatever website you're currently on. And so um, in an ideal world, of course, the web service would offer this um, composition per, uh, policy um, in a machine-readable way. Unfortunately, this is not uh, widespread the case, to say the least. Um, and so we um, believe that um, the record during the recording procedure, we should also um, record this um, password composition policy if it is not available from the web service. Um, so we act so that it is available when we play back the blueprint. Now, there are two more components in the password um, changer itself, and that is the notification manager, which simply um, handles um, notifications to the user about breaches and can actually display user notifications. And now the really interesting part is um, when we come to the crowdsourcing. So we have um, these trust authorities here. And these trust authorities um, basically serve to functions. Um, they are the hub for the crowdsourcing activities and can offer two services. The first one is a blueprint exchange service and that's probably the most obvious thing. So um, the user simply records this um, blueprint, then um, it's in the manager and he can uh, upload it. And afterwards, um, the trust authority should actually screen this um, content, uh, make sure that it's valid um, and that it's non-malicious, and afterward, it, other users can download it um, to simply perform this automatic change on their machines. The second function is the notification service, and I think this, um, here also the users can report um, the, um, any breaches um, they, become, they become aware of, but also um, here we believe that um, the web services and security experts would be um, very good sources to actually provide this information. And now, why do we call this trust authority? We believe that um, this is content where um, accuracy is um, important, and so um, we believe that the trust authorities should digitally, digitally sign um, all the information that they provide so um, that the authenticity of the um, content is actually assured. And you can see here that we have multiple of these trust authorities available. Um, this is simply, we believe it's, um, it should be um, flexible enough to support multiple of these trust authorities and that users can then actually choose which trust authorities, which of these services they subscribe to, just like we have it with ad blockers today. So we can um, subscribe to certain filter lists um, depending on what we actually want. And to offer this same choice. Um, Sorry, what do you mean by blueprint? Blueprint. The, the, the blueprint is basically a transcript of the user's actions. I, will ha I have a video, you will see the, the whole process um, in just, yeah, in a few minutes. Um, all right, and so from this um, concept, we built a prototype um, uh, using the, uh, for the Firefox browser as um, a Firefox add-on. 
And so um, we use the Firefox uh, password manager. Now this one can generate passwords. So um, we also implemented a little password uh, generator um, that is rudimentary um, in the um, add-on just for testing purposes. And so um, we implemented only the core components here because we wanted to um, actually give this to users and gather feedback on the idea of recording blueprints and playing them back. All right, and since we have only these, um, these core components, there are two actions the user can do. He can record a blueprint and he can play it back. And how that actually looks like, um, you can see uh, now I have prepared uh, videos for both of these actions. And um, I will pause this video in between to highlight some challenges because um, there will be things that seem unintuitive. Um, <laughs> And I just um, going going to explain that um, while we're there. Okay. So basically, first the, the um, you see this little icon up here. That's the one you saw on the title slide. Um, that's basically the um, interface that's always uh, visible um, to the user. And if we click on that, we get a menu. Um, with two simple items, we can either start an ad hoc recording if we are already on a website that we want to create a blueprint for. And um, the second one is an account list um, where we can access all the accounts that are in the password manager. Um, that looks like this. Um, it's a prototype interface, so it's not really um, beautiful or anything, but it's functional. Uh, we have the, um, the website um, with our user account. Um, now we only have one account here, which is for GitHub, and we have the relevant actions we can perform. We can change a password automatically. Um, we can change a password in manual mode, which means the blueprint is executed just to the point um, where we actually reach the form um, to change the um, password, and the user can change the password himself. Uh, when he then submits this form, the rest of the blueprint is executed. And we have this export functionality um, in the prototype, which is basically exporting the blueprint um, to the desktop to save it. Um, we can also look um, at what blueprints are available in the system, and currently um, there are not. But um, we're now going to record one. And we, um, if we click this button, um, the uh, password manager will actually tell us that there is no um, blueprint available and whether we want to uh, uh, create one and we want to create one and what the add-on then actually does, it directly opens the website and starts the recording for us. So um, now the button here has changed from start recording to stop recording and um, the um, add-on is actually um, making the transcript. And here is one of the things that we needed to impose on the user already because it's not easily, it's not easy to detect reliably when a user is logged in because all websites handle that very, very differently. Um, and so for this prototype, we simply set the rule. If you start a recording or um, you want to play back a blueprint, you have to be logged out um, of the account. That is a limitation, um, but that was the easiest way to handle it. And so the blueprint also needs to include both the login and the logout procedures so people don't um, end up being logged in just because they changed the password. Oops, sorry, that was bad. All right. All right, um, so we continue with the, the um, recording. We just sign in, and here comes um, the next thing. And this is also a known problem because websites do not tend to label the form fields um, in any meaningful way, and that changes everywhere. Um, so what we need people to do um, is to label these fields for the recording. We have these three types, um, the username, the current password, and the new password. And so we're here on the login site, so um, we label the field with the username and as feedback that this field has been dealt with, um, it is um, highlighted in yellow. Um, then we do this um, for the password. 
um, which we mark as current password, and then we just continue um, signing in. And now we navigate to the page where we can set the new password. And also here, we now have to label these fields to be able to um, play that back later on. And here it's important um, that we actually perform this password change because we do not know what happens after we press um, the update password button. Um, there might be other websites that appear. Um, and so we actually want the user to really perform this change. And so after having filled a new password, um, we click update and then we are finished and we can, um, as the last step, log out um, of the account. And then we can stop the recording. And that's basically it. If we now go to the account list, we, um, and then to, we can look at the blueprints again and see um, that our newly created blueprint is now available in the system. All right. So um, just as a quick summary of the challenges that we uh, faced there, it's uh, difficult to detect if uh, users are actually logged in. Um, and so we had um, to impose this, that the user has to be logged out before the recording and before playing back one of the blueprints and automatic detection of the form fails is difficult. This is a well-known problem um, and we had to work around this. So users have to label these fields. All right, um, so that's the uh, recording procedure. And now how do, does this look if we actually um, play back such um, uh, blueprint? So start again um, in the browser and so this is our situation. We have this bad legacy password that we want to change. And to do that, um, we just go to our account list. And then we see the blueprint is available. And we can now click on change password automatically. And this, um, this alert pop-up that comes here is actually one of the challenges that arose because um, while implementing this in <coughs> Firefox, um, the API actually suggested that it would be possible um, to do this in the background, but um, that didn't really uh, work out. So um, this just tells the user, we will now open up a new window and you will, and you will be able to watch um, this change happen live. Um, we would like to do it in the background, but unfortunately we currently can't. Um, so when we, click OK, um, the, this new window actually comes up and it starts uh, playing back the blueprint. Um, so I let the mouse go there. I sometimes close this um, one uh, window of the uh, password manager that appears, but other than that, there's no interaction with the website. Um, it just um, plays back the whole thing. And so uh, one thing I want to uh, mention this is now, um, relatively quick, but actually this still works on throttle because um, if you do this too quickly, um, it actually can trigger abuse detection mechanisms, for example, on GitHub. So. Yeah, so uh, I have a question. Uh, speaking of abuse detection, uh, many websites try to defend exactly if they uh, give this type of scenario for uh, some type of program to try to change the password uh, for the user. So they introduce uh, well, Perhaps we can, I can just address these questions after I've shown everything. Okay. Um, all right, so what we um, do is that we um, simply introduced um, a two second delay after each action. That was actually enough. Um, we first thought about um, actually recording the timing of the user, but um, it ended up much faster to just um, introduce this delay. All right, um, and so once this is finished,
uh, we get the message that um, the password has been changed successfully. And to show you, it's, it has actually changed in the um, password manager. I know this is not the current password for the account. You don't have to try. Um, and um, we can also log in with this new password um, on it, to the account. All right. Um, so again, um, highlighting the, the two challenges um, here, um, it was not uh, possible to perform the change in the background. So um, we just performed it in the foreground with um, informing the user about that. And um, automatic password change can actually trigger um, these abuse detection mechanisms. And to counter that, um, we um, had this two second delay after each um, action in the blueprint. All right, and now um, having this prototype, we um, were eager to give this to people and actually gather feedback on what they think um, about this add-on. And um, so we conducted a user study um, to do a usability evaluation and to gather feedback about the general idea of recording these blueprints and playing them back. And so we invited people to our lab. Um, the laptop was provided, so um, installing Firefox or the add-on was not part of the study. Um, they just used it, and they both recorded a, a blueprint and played them back. And they were also informed about the export functionality. Um, how this worked for each um, participant is that they first um, had to um, sign a consent form that is simply because we used a think aloud method. So we gave them the add-on and asked them to comment all the actions and thoughts um, so we um, get the whole feedback. And um, we recorded um, this, um, we made an audio recording, and so we needed the, the consent um, for that, of course. Um, then the participants received instructions on how to operate the add-on and um, the actual task they had to perform. And um, then the participants performed the task um, with this think aloud method, and in the end, um, they filled out a system usability scale questionnaire. Uh, we had um, eight participants in this study, and from the results, we actually got um, very positive feedback. So um, first of all, all people were um, able to perform these tasks, um, and we actually got an average uh, system usability scale score of 82.5, even for this prototype implementation, um, which indicates a good to excellent usability rating. Um, and in general, also from the think aloud, we had very positive feedbacks um, that people thought um, it was really good that they could do this automatically, that they do not have to do this because many people actually admitted to not changing their passwords as frequently as, the, as they would like because it's too much hassle. But um, there also um, were mainly two um, issues that were voiced very frequently. And the first one was that people simply didn't like um, and didn't understand why they had to um, label these form fields because the computer was showing them these form fields and now they had to tell the computer um, what these form fields actually were. Um, and it was basically like, this is a, something the, the computer should do. Um, and we completely agree with our participants. And this is one of the reasons why we really hope that um, suggest, uh, proposals such as the password manager friendly markup language actually um, see wider adoption because this would make these things so much easier and um, so much better for the users. And the second um, issue that was voiced was um, with regard to the security of the blueprint. So people were actually wondering whether it was able, uh, wh whether it was possible to manipulate these blueprints um, on their machine so that these would do um, malicious stuff. And we believe um, that if we actually have the whole infrastructure with the digital signatures in place and it is actually communicated to the users that um, the authenticity um, is actually assured from the trust authority they subscribe to, um, that this would at least um, somewhat um, 
address this issue. But of course, um, further development and design and the further design will have to account um, for these issues. All right, now, um, where do we see um, this work going? Well, from this positive uh, feedback um, from the users, we actually um, started implementing all the remaining parts. Um, this is currently underway, and um, we want to evaluate all these parts together because um, the actual crowdsourcing was now not part of this um, initial study, um, and it brings in a new dynamic, so we need to test that as well. Um, and it, as part of this um, evaluation, we also want to look um, into whether additional incentives are needed to, for people to actually participate um, in these crowdsourcing activities um, or whether this um, will work. Um, just because um, there are benefits if I can download and upload these things. All right, um, and that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, and I know you have, um, then now is the time.